there was a supervising cashier. I'm sorry, there was a supervising cashier. They stand at the podium, and they and they are and they delegate. Okay, you go on your break. You it's time for you to go home. You come on to work. Go into that register. You go over there and help that customer bag. You bring that customer outside with their groceries. Okay, and they would supervise the front end. They're middle management. They're not store detectives. They're not managers. They're hourly wage employees with a and with managerial powers to some degree. And they have to go over and say, listen, it's time for your break. Take the closed register sign, give it to the last customer in line and say, okay, you're the last customer. Once you check her out, go on your break for 15 minutes. Now, there was one incident at night and there was a, a cop on duty. There was no store detective, we had a cop, an actual Yonkers cop. A female store, a female um, supervisor went over to the register and said, okay, after her, you close up. She walked over, and a man wanted to come on after the register was closed. And the supervisor said, listen, sir, you have to go to the next register over, because I'm closing this register now. The man, I was not there, I was outside when this happened. The man shoved himself, on, he like shoved his groceries onto the belt, like, fuck you, I'm not doing it, I'm staying here. That kind of attitude. And I heard he put her, his hands on her first. I don't know if he grabbed her breast, I don't know if he slapped her, but I heard he touched her body first. She stood her ground and she punched him. The male supervising cashier came over and physically broke it up. He picked her, he carried her behind the customer service desk and locked her there because she was one step shy of killing this guy right in the store. The police officer on duty with our store has to come over and he detained the customer. And at the end of the conversation, he said to the customer, you're not welcome here anymore. If you come back again, you're being arrested for trespassing. And the customer quite angrily left the store. In fact, I have what we call a U-boat. It's a flat um, cart. It has like a flat bed with wheels and it has a handle here and a handle here. It looks like a giant U from far away. We call it a U-boat. I had one standing right next to me. I had come in at this time. And on the way out, the guy knocked it out of the way. And he almost hit me. He didn't hit me, but he almost did. And he walked out of the store. That was the end of it. The male supervisor looked at me and said it's a good thing he wasn't here. Because a few months earlier, me and the head store detective put a guy in the hospital for robbery. And he was afraid that I would have beat the shit out of the guy. I would have definitely stuck up my supervisor. I would have tried to protect her or try to protect him from her, but she was not charged with a crime, nor was she punished by the store. And she was not suspended. She was not written. Um, they might have had a report written about it, but she was not punished because she, the employee at the store, had a right to stand her ground and defend herself. She was not required to retreat. Even though she had this entire area behind her to run away, she was not required to retreat. You are allowed to act on your own or by agent, like I said, the manager hiring the store detective. You ever see a celebrity guy is hiding in the bushes with a camera and the bodyguard runs over and beats the shit out of them? Okay. The bodyguard has a special license. I have a license too, by the way. It's an armed guard license, New York State. Um, the bodyguard has a special license. He is hired by the celebrity to protect them and their property. So the bodyguard is not required to retreat because he is on his employer's property. Just like the store detective, he's on the employer's property, he is allowed to defend the property and the employer from attack. He's not required to retreat, he has to use the force that is necessary. If it's just a photographer with a camera, he can just use hands to get him off the property. If it's some crazy psychopath with a rainbow knife, then he might have to kill the guy. It is what it is but you're allowed to act by yourself or by agent. Now, I don't have to be licensed, okay? My friend, let's assume this, my friend picks up the phone, calls me and says, okay, come over to my house, let's hang out and watch television. Okay, so I go over to a friend's house, I'm sitting on his couch, he's sitting on the couch next to me, we're watching television. He goes to the bathroom, a guy comes in unannounced, 
walks over and starts fucking with the DVD player, ripping it out of the wall, picks it up and walks out with it. The guy didn't announce himself as I'm so-and-so's friend, I'm borrowing the DVD player. The guy just came in unannounced and started taking shit. My friend has allowed me to be in his home. I am allowed to physically run up, tackle the guy, hold him down. My friend gets back from the bathroom, we find rope, we tie him up, we call the police and we tell the police he broke into this home and stole this and we stopped him on the way out. We're absolved. Defending ourselves on our property. We have that right. Can't stop us. If we kill him while he's tied up, that's a different story. And the force that is necessary. Now let's assume that my friend had an 11 year old daughter. Okay? And me, him, and the 11 year old daughter are watching television. He gets up to go to the bathroom. And a person comes in, grabs the 11 year old daughter, throws her on the floor, pulls her pants off. Now, this is not a gynecologist examination. This is the sexual assault of a child in my presence. Okay? I pull out my knife and I stab him in the throat and kill him. Obviously, I have to go through that giant investigation with all that paperwork and all those questions by the police. I have to hire my lawyer, answer these questions, blah, blah, blah. But he came in here, he grabbed an underage girl, took off her pants, Obviously, he was intending to harm her. And you can use deadly force to stop rape. He can give her a sexually transmitted disease. He can give her, he can kill her by laying on top of her and suffocating her. So I have a right to defend her on my friend's property. And I am not required to retreat because he authorized me to be there. So that's an example of my agent. I want to check my time because I have a long story to go into. I have a few minutes. I have like eight minutes. Did you ever watch Each Hollywood Story? Okay. Each Hollywood Story had an episode, Hot for Teacher. They investigate scandals involving teachers and their students involved sexually. There was one student who was 18 years old and he was involved with his female teacher sexually. The 18 year old came to the, pro to the house with the wife and the husband and the husband was aware that the 18 year old was fooling around with his wife. The 18 year old stopped in front of the house, not in the house, in front of the house, up at the curb. The curb in front of your house is the city's property, not your property. And the husband Call 911, yada, yada, yada. The punchline is, he grabbed his shotgun, went outside, pointed it, pulled the trigger, and killed the guy. He ran away, the police caught up with him. He was charged with first degree murder, or second degree murder. He pled it down to manslaughter. Here's the issue. Self-defense means someone is gonna hurt you immediately and you needed to use violence to defend yourself. Now, did he shoot the guy because he was afraid of him? Or did he shoot the guy because he was mad at him? That's the, canon, that's the number one question. The number two question is, he advanced off his property. The castle doctrine ends at your property line. Okay, once you've gone over the property line, no castle doctrine for you. Okay, he was in the house locked up. Now, if he grabbed the gun and the kid came into the house, that would be a different story. If the kid got out of the car, stood on the front lawn and showed him a, a fully automatic assault rifle and he shot him, that would be a different story. But at the time he walked over and pulled the trigger, the problem was he probably was not in danger he left the house on his own free will, held the shotgun and shot him. Could he have been in danger? Maybe, maybe not. But you're supposed to stay in your house, the door's locked, the window's locked, you can get a gun for protection, you can prepare it for protection, you can keep it by you for protection, but you must allow the suspect to advance. Because once he advances, he's put the law in your hands. If you go out of the house and approach him sitting in a car parked in a public street, 
You've put the law in his hand. And now you're the murderer. What I would have done in that situation was, well, I probably would have picked my wife up and threw her out of the house and said, okay, be with him. But what I would have done in that situation is very simple. Board up the house, turn off the lights so you can't be seen, get the guns ready, get everybody down their hands and knees, away from the windows, away from the doors. If possible, take heavy furniture and move it around so you can hide behind it as barriers. And if the guy wanted to get out of the car and advance on me and I had to shoot him, that would have been a different story. But the issue is, what if I leave the house and there's another guy hiding in the woods, the bushes? What if I leave the house, the guy gets out of the car, shoots me dead, my family's alone? Okay, you should stay in your home, board up, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. If he's going to come on your property and fuck with you, then that's a different story. But do not leave the property because you're endangering yourself, endangering your household, and you're putting the law in his hands. Check my time again. Okay, I have four minutes. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the blow by blow, so we're gonna need to stop now.